Oh, hey there, AR-15 guy. My name is Jake, and I'm one of you, okay? See, after all, it is America, and we do love our AR-15s. But historically, when I look at our channel, there's a lot of interest in AKs, which means you're AK curious, and that's not for me to judge. You do you. You see, it's my belief that the reason many of you aren't also AK guys is because of modern features. When you think of AKs, this is typically what you think of. It's old, dusty, beaten up, a little bit rickety. There's a strange material called wood. It's built in a cave by unskilled laborers. But you know that it works. My friends, it's the year 2023, and the AK has evolved. This Rifle Dynamics build represents the modern day AK, and it's got all the bells and whistles that you, AR-15 guy, could ever need. So if you've ever been AK curious, there's never been a better time to get in the game. Juicy AK things. That's what's happening in today's video. Freaking juicy. That's not how I thought this was going to open. <laughs> Freaking juicy AK things, everyone. Let me tell you what's going to happen on this video, y'all. Um, we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about the really the modernization of the AK. Okay. Right? Because I've kind of been down my theoretical rabbit hole of like, why aren't more guys in the AKs? And I think I know. I think I know. I think I know the answer. We're, we're going to break it down today. Okay, okay. so we're going to talk about the modernization of AKs, why more guys don't get into them. We are going to talk specifically about this gun. This is a, what started out in life as a Rifle Dynamics uh, 702 um, that I had. It was actually one of the first videos that was ever on the channel. Personal gun I've had for a long time that just recently kind of got overhauled and uh, got, a, a got a facelift and uh, she looks pretty freaking different now. Um, since we will be talking about this gun, I'll just go ahead and tell you uh, relationship with Rifle Dynamics. Um, we, I hit them up after SHOT Show, yeah. and I just said, hey, I don't even know if I know anyone that works there anymore, but it's been forever since we did a Rifle Dynamics video. And uh, I said, it'd be great to do something, and I, I guess they, uh, I don't know, punched in my name into their database or something. They're like, you still got this 70, 702? And I was like, yeah, I do. I do. And they're like, why don't, we, why don't we do something with that? I was like, that sounds great. Let's cool. let's do that. So um, we'll probably show you a couple clips of what this gun was uh, like three years ago when we would have first filmed it compared to now. Whatever fancy shit that George Jetson's rolling around with. And then you go over to the Flintstones and, you know, they're barefoot, you know, and they're pedaling their car that's made out of rock and shit. And, and we'll break it down. We'll kind of go through some of the features and what makes this a modern AK and why I think more people should consider getting into AKs. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Segura, let's thank those bros before we get all into the AK talk. Yeah, are you wearing their belt? 
right now. Same. I'm wearing their belt too, guys. It's right there. I also wear their battle wagon, which is their battle belt. Yes. You wear the um, uh, emissary, emissary belt. Yeah, yeah, I'm just not a big battle belt guy. I never have been. So I rock yeah. the emissary belt as my range belt. Yeah. And I do the light uh, Velcro inner belt uh, yeah. as my EDC belt. Yeah. And they're comfortable, right? It lets my hips move, uh, which is important. It's always been an important thing for me. Um, got to stay mobile. These hips don't lie. You no. Know? no. Um, so you got to you got to let them loose, kids. Uh, you just got to let them loose. I don't know where this video is going right now, but we're just going to tell you this. Uh, the code's 1911syndicate. Saves you 10% off of your freaking belt purchases and uh, helps them out, helps us out, helps you guys out. So win, 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 my friend. Okay? Yes, this sir. This is win, win, win. Okay, so let's talk about why my, my uh, hypothesis on okay. why more AR guys aren't AK guys. Which would be me. Is you. For sure. Uh, you know, Chris is not an AK guy. You're not a fan of AKs. No. Um, and that is what it is. You know, it's like, you know, everyone's got their, everyone's got their preferences. You're not an AK guy. Nope. You know, you're not a bad person. I wouldn't call you a bad person. You're not an AK guy. I just don't like supporting communist weapons. That's yeah. all. So, um, so here's what I'm going to tell you. The, the gun world is full of what I'm going to call subsets. What I mean by that is there's the long range guys. Yep. There's the 1911 guys. Um, there's the night, there's the night vision guys yeah. and the Glock guys, right? And there's the AK guys. Yeah. Okay. And the AK guys are the worst ambassadors for AKs. <laughs> I was gonna say my first image is like a sweaty dude, so probably has some hygiene issues, talks about com block stuff really often. I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah. jumpsuits, all, all that yes. kind of stuff, right? Yes. So good, that's good not even as much what I mean where I'm going with my point, even though that is true, uh, which is part of the thing I celebrate about the AK community. Um, what I mean by it is the AK community speaks their own language of nerd. That if you are not in the AK community, you will not understand anything that they tell you about AKs. That That's fair, because even like if you're a not Glock guy, but you hear Glock guys talking about it, you know enough about Glocks but AKs is its own little thing. At least a Glock's a Glock. Yeah. We go, yeah. we got AKMs. We got AK-47s, AK-74s. We got Wassers. We, we've got M92s. We got Krinks. You're like, hang on, so these are all AKs? Well, yeah. Yeah. We're like, but well, what's the, what? what? You know, in, in AK guys, you guys screw your community over because you speak fluent Italian for someone that only speaks English, and we're just like, hang on, I'm not speaking the same. Can you put your language into some terms that I can understand? Because I would like to learn, but you're turning me off from it. That is reason number one that's, why that's AR a, guys. Don't. I kind of sit in that category a little bit. Because you're just confused all the time. Yeah. Like, can you just tell me what the hell I need? Yeah. Like, it's very difficult. Number two, manual of arms. Because it's a different manual of arms, for some people, that's a roadblock. They go, because I like my my, my, my button, and my AR, and my mag sure. goes in, and I drop my bolt, and that's how it works. And AKs, hey, we are dealing with different things now, right? Um, you know, for a right-handed shooter, you know, obviously we've got a, a paddle here where I release my mag, and mag goes in, right? Now i got to come underneath and charge my bolt, and you go, okay, this is just a different manual of arms. Yeah. I get a click instead of a bolt lock back, mm -hmm. you know? It's like I only know I'm in, empty when I get a click. It's Look, it's just a different set of just a different manual of arms. You yep. know, and for some people, that is a, a breaking point. Number three, it is in a caliber that is not 5.56 five, the vast majority of the time, okay? For a lot of, again, AR guys, they go, well, I, I got my ARs. They're they're all in two two three. Yep. you know? Unless you're one of those weirdos that gets, like, AR pattern rifles and, like, fucking whatever. Um, but, you know, I got my six arc rifle, and you're like, okay, 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 dude. Um, so... <clears throat> Because it's in a caliber that's not 5.56, for some people, that's a turnoff. Even though 7.62 by 39, which is what this is, your traditional AK round, um, is widely available and not hard to get. It's plentiful. It's not like there's an issue there. Um, it is different from 5.56. And my friend, I have breaking news. I don't think we ever broke news on this channel oh, okay. before. So I was talking to Rifle Dynamics, as we do. We always try to do calls with manufacturers yeah. heading in, in the videos. And uh, and I was like, man, I, I really wish you guys would do 5.56 five, AKs. And they were like, this summer. Oh, really? And I was like, can I say that? And they were like, sure. Okay. Breaking news, everyone. 5.56 five, five, AKs. RD's getting into 5.56 five, five, AKs. Uh, should be this summer. Don't quote me on a date, but it's like, hey, I would that interests me. That very much interests me. Yeah. Because now, look, I, oh, dude, think about what I just solved here. Now I've got an AK, ultra-reliable weapon, 
um, that now is running the round that I'm used to running. So the only weird barrier to entry for AR guys now is magazines. Like that's that's it. Yeah. It's like okay, cool. I can't run AR mags. I get five, five, six AK mags. No big deal. But it's just like, dude, that's a that's a big win. I'm very excited about the rifle dynamics five, five, six um, AK. Sure, that, sure. That, that that's a win. And then the last reason I believe AR guys don't get into AKs is lack of modern features, right? Because as kind of alluded to by the intro, when you think of AKs, for so many of you, this is what you're thinking of. You're going, yeah, man. There, it's just this old kind of beaten up thing, and it's not refined, and it. It punches me in the face and shoulder like a mule when you shoot it, yep. which this gun most certainly does. Um, it, you know, it's just, it's not an enjoyable thing. Man, I got I got lasers, I got optics, I got lights, man. I got, I got, I got all my shit I gotta put on my gun. I can't I do that on that, you know? Agreed. You know what I'm saying? Though? I do, I do. Like, this is again, another key point of why I'm not an AAK guy. Well, my friend, we are gonna break it down. Um, before we get into the breakdown of this gun, a couple ways you guys can support the channels. Uh, one with real estate, we're, uh, the 1911 Syndicate. You can just go to 1911syndicate.com. It's linked down below, but it is a uh, nationwide real estate company. Yep. Chris is in Arizona, I'm in Utah, but we got agents all over the country, so you can reach out to us via the site. We'll get in touch with you. We'll, we'll see if we can help you out. And then we got Patreon, man. Pa what a great week. Uh, what a time to be alive for Patreon. Yep. Um, there are uh, quite a few people from Patreon are flying into Utah tomorrow yeah. to participate in the first ever Patreon-only uh, Red Dot class that uh -huh. um, we are hosting, not teaching, but hosting. Um, it's going to be great. We're going to be doing whiskey tastings at night. and Barbecue. Um, My pops is flying in. Yeah, I'm going to try to get get him to maybe have a drink. Hey, Dwayne, uh, have a drink. Yeah, yeah, you know. I'm, yeah, gonna do my, I'm gonna do my best though. But um, you know, we're gonna have a great time. So check out Patreon, we'll link that below. A lot of cool stuff that happens there. Okay, so let's talk about this um, <clears throat> this gun that started off as a rifle, Dynamic 702, um, traditional, you know, buffer tube stock. Um, you know, didn't have all the M lock and all this kind of stuff. Let's let's talk about it. So, one thing that I will say about this is that gun in its previous configuration was on my top five guns list. Yeah. Um, huh. You know, we're doing that series now. We've done it with Jim's Goon Life, Mike Pappas, got a couple other guests coming up, and when we did our list originally. I was like, look, man, this this is one of my guns. It's yeah. super reliable. Um, you know, like, I mean, for a variety of factors, that was in my top five guns list. Um, and this is just way cooler and way better now. Way right? cooler. So it's even better these days. Let's talk about it. That gun was dated, which is kind of how this video came about. It was like, man, great gun. It's little, I think it could be a little modernized. So the first thing that happened here was the rear trunnion. Okay, this is where, again, we lose... AR guys, because yeah. you start with like, what what the hell are you talking about with this rear trunnion? So we're talking about this little bracket, if you will, back here, right? That's on the receiver. And essentially, hey, the rear trunnion was swapped from instead of being a buffer tube with a B5 stock on it, now we've got a 1913 pick rail section. Yeah. Well, that opens me up to all kinds of fun toys. Uh-huh. Because now I could run basically any of the like SIG MCX compatible style stocks. Yeah. Right. So I could run a SIG, uh, you know, Spear LT stock yeah. on this. Um, huh. There's a bunch of good ones out there. I went with this one from Midwest Industries. This is their Alpha stock. Um, let me just make sure I got that right. But yeah, it's their Alpha stock. Um, there's a company called Zenico. And Zenico is a Russian company. Yeah. And they make a stock that essentially is, this is the clone of the Zenico oh, stock. Oh, I've seen it in like, um, what's their special operations dudes? Spetsnaz. Yeah, and, and Spetsnaz and, and like promos when Vickers was over there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's a very famous stock. The problem is, my friend, it is Russian and they are being like literally impounded and like burned at the docks right now. Well, I think that Ukraine and Russia are in a war, right? So yeah. yeah. There's a conflict. There's a issue. Um, so. And uh, so literally like you can't get the stocks right now. Like they're, they're, they're like literally being seized at the port to my understanding and the ones that are out there selling for like a grand. I can't, <laughs> I can't pay you a grand for a, a Zenico stock. I, I, I just, I, I have a, a limit on that. So this is one from Midwest Industries. It's their alpha stock. It's basically a clone um, of that. And I have to tell you, I've been quite um, enjoying this. Yeah. Because it's extremely modular. I mean, I guess sure. about the only complaint, even though it hasn't been an issue, but you could argue, hey, because there are more 
adjustment points, well, those are all threads and screws where you go, hey, that is a, those are more failure points for something to be able to back out. That said, none of that has happened. Throw a little Loctite in there. And uh, I did. I yeah. put some thread locker on, which um, Midwest sends with the stocks. Okay. Well. So it's like, cool, I just dab the screws in, throw it, throw it we're in the kind of shit, yeah. and we're good. Um, and these are side folders too. So, hey, I can nice little si bag. side fold the stock. And because, of course, AK's not running on a buffer tube, you know, I could dump the whole mag without the stock ever being, you know, flipped. Sure. Um, right? Or I could just take the damn thing off and just run it straight up old school. This doesn't lock where there's a button you have to push. It's just, it's just a flip. I'm okay with that. Oh, that's how I prefer. I don't want to have to push a button to get my stock out if I needed to. Um, but I've really been enjoying this. I've got it on another gun right now that will be coming up on the channel in about a month from when you guys see this. Uh, this mod uh, with the 1913 rail was a collab that Rifle Dynamics did with a company called Occam Defense. Uh -huh. um, they're an AK builder up in Idaho that uh, you weren't here for that video, but I did a solo video yeah. on the Occam AK. And they make some really good components and things that are... Um, Pretty innovative, actually. Cool. Brian, the dude there is a, like a fucking aerospace engineer. He's um, good friends with Jeff. Yeah, yeah. I can't literally understand anything that he says. I've talked to him a few times, and I'm like, bro, I'm way dumber than you think I am. <laughs> like, I, you got to be way more dumb w w when you talk to me. So um, that's first thing we did was swapping out the stock, getting the rear trunnion swapped out. Next thing, trigger. We swapped out the G2, like the traditional AK trigger. The one that's in here now is, uh, it's on the Rifle Dynamics site. They call it the LBE Unlimited G3 Trigger. Okay. Okay. Um, so it is kind of a flat face style trigger, more or less. Some people, when they start modding out AKs, they put a trigger from a company called ALG. Yeah, subsidiary of Geisley. Yeah. Um, and I would advise against that. And I can tell you, well, I guess I shouldn't speak for them, but I'm going to say I believe that Rifle Dynamics would probably tell you it, it wouldn't be advised. In their opinion, um, they're certainly not going to warranty that trigger. They're sure. like, hey, we might put it in for you, but we ain't warranty that thing. Because they will sometimes turn your gun into a musket and sometimes turn your gun into a machine gun. Oh, so it's a party either way. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So um, my previous ALG trigger um, blessed me with a thing called three-round burst. <laughs> um, and I realized that probably is not supposed to happen. We should probably get that trigger out. Yeah. And indeed, that trigger needed to come there out. There you go. So, hey, just my two cents. Um, I would maybe do a different trigger. I've been enjoying this nice trigger pull. It's never going to be a Geisley. It's not. Yeah, it's, it's a not. different system. <laughs> um, but we did the trigger. And then we did the Krebs Custom Ambidextrous Safety. So I'm a lefty for those of you that don't know. AKs, without this little mod that's down here from Krebs, um, essentially you have to have your support hand staged here so that you take the safety off and then you punch out and go to work, right? Um, so that's kind of how you have to wind up running them. The Krebs are really good because I've just got a little nub down here where I can flip, flip safety off and, and get things done. So. It's a, like an AK world, that's a great safety. As a right-handed shooter, I just used my knuckle and it was good to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a necessity for Yeah, me. and for you as a righty, typically, you know, if your fingers are long enough, you, you literally just use your trigger finger. Sometimes they have a little nub back here on some of the safeties that you just run yeah. off on this. Yeah. But for no, you, that's even, awesome. even as a righty, yeah, like, cool. Yep. Like, just, you know, it's mm -hmm. party. So the Krebs safety. This, again, this is really not even meant to really be a review, more of like a, hey, this is just kind of a cool gun that we're showing you guys and just kind of talking about a cool gun. Next thing we did, uh, this was, I, I was excited about. So it now has a tunable gas block in it. So it's got an adjustable gas block. <clears throat> Notice it had an adjustable gas block, not adjustable piston. Yeah. Okay, so I've got another AK and it has a K&S adjustable piston in it. Kind of the, the, the pain in the dick a little bit of tuning the piston is one, heat, um, you know, cause it's going to get hot and you kind of have to disassemble your, your gun. At least you have to do a field strip of it to be able to get the piston out, to make the adjustment, put it back in. Did it do what I wanted it to do? No, pull it back out. You know, and you have to kind of go through that dance. This from Rifle Dynamics, different system. Um, at the front of the hand guard here by the barrel, you'll see that little Allen key yeah. adjustment, uh -huh. right? So literally you just put an Allen key in there and just whichever, whether you're tightening it up or, you know, more gas or less gas, make the adjustment, good to go. Okay. Which is great because it's really quick. You don't have to deal with heat. Um, you, of course, would have to, I guess, technically have a tool on you if you needed to do that, right? But AKs are notoriously overgassed. Like it, yeah. it, it's just, it's what they are. That's yeah. part of where that AK reliability, reliability yeah. comes from. You know, so you go, hey, when you're running a suppressor on a really overgassed gun, not gonna be fun, first of all, and uh, not gonna be healthy for your gun. 
sure. like overall wear and tear your gun's really gonna you gotta beat it up take take a beating so um I've run this suppressed some. Uh, I've tuned it for suppressed today. When we shot it suppressed, I left it in the unsuppressed setting because we were only running like a mag or, or two through it suppressed. So I was like, ah, it'll be fine. So if it looks like, hey, your gun's probably over gas suppressed. Yeah, it was because we didn't do the adjustment before yeah. we shot it suppressed today. It just wasn't worth the juice, wasn't worth the squeeze. But um, really nice. That tunable gas block I've, I've actually been a big fan of. And because, I mean, you can get this thing tuned exactly where you want it. Just nice. Yeah. It's nice. Uh, really glad they're doing that. Um, Next, the SLR Rifle Works and uh, Rifle Dynamics Collaboration handguard in uh, s s this portion of the top rail here. So this, very nice upgrade, and one of the things that I believe from an AR guy conversion perspective yep. starts to make AKs a lot more appealing. Majorly. Because on a, either a wood handguard or just a polymer one, which is what this used to have, it, it had basically an Ultimac rail here, yep. which is just the top rail, but all this was polymer. One, this gets super hot. The Ultimac rails get super, super hot, um, which if you're running an optic on it, a lot of heat on an optic that's very, very close to that rail. I've never killed an optic doing that. I've never actually had an issue, but I'm just saying, hey, you have an optic that is very, very close to this rail that's sure. accumulating a lot of heat. Sure. You know, a shitty optic may or may not get through that. Even just the mount. So now they've basically got this collab um, SLR Rifle Dynamics handguard. You've got all your M-lock. So, hey, if you wanna run your vert grips, hand stops, lights, um, lasers, any of that kind of stuff, it's party, man. Yeah. Like set this up exactly like an AR. Aesthetically, it looks great too. Looks great. <coughs> but I run this exactly like I would an, an AR, right? That's what my support yeah. hand does. I've got I've got a hand stop on, on this one, pressure pad and the Surefire sure. Dual Fuel. And like, it's a really good little setup. Okay, so up next, we've got the Texas Weapon Systems uh, rail here. The specific one, this is the Gen 3 TWS Dogleg Rail. Good luck remembering that one without <laughs> notes for those of you that are haters on our notes. So here's what this is. <clears throat> Prior to having this, you had to run an optic on this portion of the rail. Yep. One, as mentioned, heat, right? Because this is right above the, the gas tube. Um, but, you know, I don't mind an optic being that far forward, but you know, cause the thing was when you would take the dust cover off, well, you couldn't have an optic back here cause the optic would lose zero. So basically the way that this thing works now, it's on this hinge system. So hopefully it maintains zero. Yeah. And I haven't had any issues thus far. Um, I haven't probably tracked as well as I should, but there's been no, no noticeable shift um, in POI. But the idea is like, cool, man, I can flip this up. I can take out, you know, the, the basic level of the guts of it, put it back in and cool dust covers backed on optic didn't need to be re -zero, sure right it's really smart they apparently had some early issues on early H hello can, can i help you bro we're making movies here damn and man like, you are not even welcome you just had to be here on camera huh? this video he's got a big just so you guys know at home he's got a huge ego lately about like there was a dog coat there was a there was like a it was like a pet co commercial or something the yeah. other day and he was like he's I've talking been in, shit yeah he's he's talking about how many more movies he's in than those stupid pet co dogs bitches yeah is what he called them and i was just like dude that is so not kosher a lot of ego previously you could do the ultimac rail or you could do a side scope mount so that one like that old school one has a side scope mount right it's what yep. all this shit is for over here i just simply hate side scope mounts i, they look I don't terrible. like them i think they look really stupid and that's not a very good reason to not do something but i don't like them and that's it that's good enough for me yeah you know that's good enough for me um the other couple things they did obviously you may notice a paint job um hats off to him man great job the dude over there i had a couple quick messages with him but the desert tiger stripe yeah it looks like a vietnam desert tiger stripe that uh you wouldn't know this metal gear solid that's what that should be in i know that has something to do with mark 23s oh good job yeah, wow. people always comment that on our Mark 23 videos. Good job. Yeah, it's a like, great video game. Snake so that, snake. Solid snake. Yeah, solid snake. Good job. Yeah. Um, but man, Rifle Dynamics uh, killed it on the de Desert Tiger Stripe. That's not like a standard option they do. I think they will do it. You just have to pay them to to, to do it. Yeah. I just don't think it's in the drop-down menu. So, hey, all that work done, how does it shoot? Because this gun, you now just as a frame of reference, say if you were to get a gun kitted out like this, you know, start to finish, you're, you're looking at about four grand. So it's not a cheap gun. Nope. Like we're not in the era of $800 AKs anymore. Like, no, a good modern AK is going to run you basically what a good modern AR is going to run you. Sure sounds like Several it. thousand dollars, right? But with a lot of features added in. But it shoots very nice. I've been very happy with it. 
Um, cause it'd been a while since I'd shot this gun, even in its previous configuration. I was like, truthfully, it'd kind of been a while since I'd really done much with that. Yeah. And when this came back and I took it out for the first day to zero it and shoot it, I was like, man, that, that is a really nice shooting AK. And I know AKs aren't your thing, but. Okay. Old school, 80s, Chevy pickup truck. Mm -hmm. Reliable, doesn't ride very nice. No. Probably could use some loving. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is the new Chevy AT4 with all the bells and whistles. Yeah. Okay. If you're a truck guy. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, like, that's the kitted out version of, hey, look, that's what yeah. you can do with AKs these days. Gun you shoots very, very nice for an AK. Very nice. I think you only shot it suppressed today, so you probably got the shit into that stick. A um, couple final thoughts, though. Look, it's just my opinion. You got to have an AK in your collection. You know, if you're a gun guy, you got to have an AK in your collection. I get it. They're two different worlds, all that kind of stuff. But make these things what you want them to be, much in the way that you would build out an AR these days and you pick which handguard you want and all that kind of stuff. Cool. You can do all that same shit with AKs, right? And I guess I will kind of end on this. Um, the last time I believe I had spoken about rifle dynamics on camera was in a video. I believe it was just me, and it was probably a couple years ago now. But we did kind of a mic or a rifle dynamics versus Meridian Defense yeah. video. Yep. And I said in that video, it was around the time that uh, Jim Fuller, who was you know kind of like the OG rifle dynamics guy, had left the company. However, that that uh, you know it's above my pay grade. But however that worked, Jim had moved on to to do other things. And I kind of posed the question, which is, I have to wonder if after the creator and kind of the head honcho, after he leaves, can the company maintain the can they maintain it? You know, sure. can, they, can they keep the ship going, sure. or does it kind of fade and the QC goes down and all that kind of stuff? And um, I'm happy to say, you know, a, a couple years after that, those statements of me kind of being on the fence of like, hey, I don't know if rifle dynamic, you know, I don't know how that's going to shake out. I think they've stayed relevant. I think they're making very, very good products these days. Um, I think they've almost done what is borderline unexpected, yeah. which is they advanced the ship, they pushed forward, and I think good on them. You know, cool. You know, I, I, I almost kind of wanted to have that moment where I'm like, hey, I feel like I have my clarity on my situation from years ago. And could they hold up? Yeah. 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 I think they can. You're happy with it. You know, and they're making damn good stuff. And I'm excited about this. And I'm, uh, you know, hopefully we'll wind up doing something on one of those 556 AKs when those bad boys come out. Cool. That's about it. That's all you got? Yeah. Cool. Closing thoughts. I mean, we got to talk about one thing, FLP. Yes. Firearms Legal Protection. They are a channel-wide sponsor. Yeah. They are concealed carry insurance. So if you get in a self-defense scenario, with or without a gun, as long as it's legally justified, mm. they're going to cover you. Mm. You make a little bit of a mess, they're going to cover that. They also cover up um, your attorney's fees. They can also... Uh, wait, wait before you say anything. You can have different plans. So if you have a family member, they can be on your plan. This Since you live on your own, well, that's not the plan that you have. But that's the plan that I have. No, yeah. Whether you travel or have family or, yep. uh, you know, your, your your kids packing heat or I don't know. How, well, however you run your household, it's not for, for us to judge. Um, we're just saying, hey, better to have it not need it than need it not have it kind of scenario. So uh, it's code 1911. Plug that in when you check out or just click on the link below and it saves you a good chunk off the service where I think you guys will enjoy it and be glad you got it. Yep. That's it, man. Party that's all we got time. today. Yep. All right, guys. Thanks again.